Let's give you a little tour of the cutouts that I have created, uh, or a cutout that I created for the new cooktop, which is right here. I just put some protective stuff on top because I'm actually putting the camera on there to film this process. So here's the story. The old cooktop is ever so slightly longer than the new one. Um, slightly by, I mean, almost two centimeters. So that uh, can create a situation where a gap is shown. So what I did was I originally measured this um, cutout so that the maximum amount of counter space would be in front. And then I noticed that it had not been cut straight. There's a big dip right there. So what I ended up having to do is run a sight line off of that to get an idea of how deep off of the original cut, which is now scribbled out, and I did a sight line off of this side too, which shows up over there. And I noticed that I should probably have about a quarter of an inch from um, from the the new sight line, which meant that I needed to drift the the cutout uh, towards the front of the counter by oh I'd say four or five millimeters, maybe a quarter inch or a little less than that, I'd say, maybe a three, a three eighths. Uh, well, that's wrong. Maybe, oh, well, well, I'll just go with millimeters. I can't do this Imperial stuff, the, the conversion. Say four mm. So the, what I did was I just moved the cutout drawing forward by, you know, a few millimeters on the front and on the back. And what that did was, in the end, it ended up lining on, up on a quarter inch on the tape measure pretty much perfectly, but I mean, if you want to know what a quarter inch is in millimeters, we'll take it off of, uh, which one lines up here? Usually it's 10. Nope. What lines up? Let's say uh, on 11, right? So a quarter inch on uh, 11 is... 4 mm, 5 mm. So that's pretty much what this is. I think it's 3 or 4 mm. And so what I ended up doing was just bring, long story short, without getting into all kinds of numbers, I just drifted the countertop, for the cooktop forward on the countertop to make an allowance for this really shoddy cutout here. So now the, um, of course, then I double, triple, quadruple measured everything because now I've cut out the corners. You're supposed to be doing these corners round, and the reason why is if you don't, they crack. And this guy's got a crack right there from a bad cut, corner cut. And this is a very common with um, most corners. I mean, doorways, windows, that's where the cracks occur. It's always in the corner coming up. And what's ironic is that, I mean, if you look at this, that's almost a perfect 45 degree crack. That's just the way forces work in this world. Yeah. So might get in there with some, uh, I've seen a technique where you use ice and then crazy glue and then a uh, hair dryer to glue this together. Might give that a shot and then sand it down or might just not give it a shot and move on to stuff that's a little more high priority. So I drilled a pilot hole with a little tiny, uh, let's see, what we use, a 4mm drill to kind of just get my bearings and then I re-drilled it out with a I think this is an 8 mm uh, so far so good I did a little test drilling uh, right there to see how this material responded to being drilled I would strongly advise that you do the same if you're going to be working with uh, older countertops they may be like if you work with a Bakelite countertop you want to be definitely sure you know what you're dealing with that stuff is brittle this is uh, I don't know what it is maybe it's cultured marble maybe it's uh, some kind of Chinese Korean it's certainly an epoxy plastic resin something or other it stains really easily it's ne definitely not natural stone so, um, you know, this thing, I, who knows, it's at least 20 years old. So, you know, maybe somebody will know exactly what this material is, but I can tell you it's soft and very prone to staining, particularly coffee, 
chicken blood, uh, what else stains the crap out of this thing, aluminum, all of these things leave tremendous stains on this thing. I would dearly love to seal it up so it didn't have so much staining. But again, that's something that I'm just going to have to research more because I really have, I haven't worked on a countertop like this. Jeez, when was the last time? Serious countertop work? Maybe the late 80s? Something like that? So I'm drawing on <laughs> what, 30, 40 year old knowledge here to get this, this cooktop in. I, I watched a couple of YouTube videos to see how other people have done it and there's nothing new. So I just went with what I know. Uh, when I go with the jigsaw, which is the next thing, I might put even more tape down. I, the tape serves two purposes. First, it sort of holds the, it binds the surface material together. And secondly, it, it leaves um, a skid area for the plate of the jigsaw, which some, can sometimes scratch the surface. And you don't want to do that because often the jigsaw scratches are uh, on the outside of whatever it is you're dropping in. Everything looks okay. Registration on the oven, uh, uh, um, well, cutout is looking pretty good. And the oven's got a bit of a drift, uh, maybe a full centimeter, so you can go half a cm each way. We're hoping that this will just all kind of line up and look nice. You know, it's got the 10 feet for sure looking good, 2 feet maybe looking good, um, 2 inches. Well, you never look great at 2 inches. Nothing does. So I'm hoping for 2 feet which is pretty much your eyes to the countertop when you're standing up. Uh, so far, no big, horrible surprises. I got a couple thicknesses of um, the underlying material there to work through, so that jigsaw blade is going to drift. I don't expect the hole to be all that straight. I'm expecting that blade to go uh, wonky. I'm going to try and keep it straight, but those blades are real thin, and they tend to uh, drift laterally. So you end up with strange um, angled holes if, you're, uh, if you push that saw at all. It deflects the blade, so you have to go real slow. And I'm going to use a, f a very fine tooth blade so, uh, so as to reduce the chances of chipping, which is what my experience tells me. But like I said, the corner holes are now cut out, so we're committed to this size. And uh, you can see where I have the original line and then the line that's two, uh, say three or four millimeters closer to the front of the countertop and then I have this registration line that runs off that chip there or that weird cutout that really kind of went funny and that's uh, I just put no there so I don't cut on it and of course I scribbled out the original line I strongly encourage you to do so if you do this kind of work the other thing I did was the, I mean the lines are not exactly perfect they can sometimes, because they're kind of long, you know, that's sort of a long line. It's uh, 47 centimeters long. So you can lose a millimeter or gain a millimeter here. So what I did was when I remeasured, I just gave myself some instructions on where to cut on this line. So the front line, I'm going to cut right on the line. The side line here, I've got an instruction to myself to go a little outside uh, this line. So I'm going to cut outside this line because it's a bit thin. Uh, this line's okay. And of course, the line on the other end is, is going to say the same thing, cut on me. And this line here is saying you can go a bit wide, just one blade width, blade width which is about 2 mm. So that should give me plenty of uh, room. The worst thing is cutting the, let me see, too big is a real problem, but too small is also a bear because you've got to get back in there and kind of shave off 2 mm, which is like a blade width. And it's hard to do, um, takes forever to do it right. And of course, then you're lifting the cooktop, dropping it in, lifting it out, putting it in. And you always, you always run the risk of damaging it when you're moving around that much. And I just don't want to move it around a lot because these cooktops are uh, made of glass. And if you drop it, you chip the corner. That's your problem, not their problem, because they delivered it okay. So what I tend to prefer to do is measure a whole bunch of times, leave a millimeter or two wiggle room and then hope that it all worked out and uh, in the end it'll work out no matter what I mean the cooktops going in it's just a question of how perfect and I would like it to be pretty perfect because Mrs. Maker uses the kitchen constantly and it's like her domain and abode for which I am endlessly grateful because I cook craft dinner and, not, and very little else so she's uh, well, and, and canned soup of course I'm from Canada so we're into canned food like mad but uh, 
when it comes to gourmet f style cooking, <laughs> it's not my forte. So what I'm trying to do, of course, is deliver Mrs. Maker the environment where she can enjoy herself because she really does enjoy cooking. Uh, and she's not feeling like she's bumping into stuff. She's got room. She's got adequate heating potential and she's got the right equipment and all that jazz because all that jazz really matters uh, and I like her happy. So that's where we're uh, gonna, well, I'm going to leave off here and get on to the time lapse now because I've got to do the cutout with the jigsaw. I just wanted to give you a preamble as to what's going on, where we stand. So far so good, everything looks great. I did drop the cooktop into the uh, hole kind of sideways to see where things lay and that led to my original fear of this this uh, you know, fat cut here running me into trouble. So onwards to the actual carpentry and I'll see you on the other side. Here's a little test cut that I did with the um, jigsaw. I'm using a medium fine blade and it left a very very clean cut which is encouraging. I'm very happy to see that. So what I'm going to do now is uh, just check the blade depth because I think my blade might be too short. This is quite a thick counter and I don't want the tip of the, of the um, blade skipping out and hitting the countertop which would chip it really badly. So that's the next thing to test. This uh, jigsaw I've got here, which was lent to me by a friend, uses two different types of blades. This is more like a sawzall type um, blade and it, it takes those. And it also takes your standard uh, uh, jigsaw uh, blades. The, to me these are the new style that you kind of push in because my old ancient jigsaw didn't uh, have blades with tips like this. It just kind of screwed in. It was a Black & Decker with a set screw. Uh, you just kind of used to hold the blade in. So this, this new end to me is kind of newfangled. It looks like a quick release to me. And uh, this is definitely a quick release. My, my Sawzall in Canada has that, that fitting on it. And so does my jigsaw in Canada. They, so I, I kind of got used to them last year when I was working on the houses in Ontario. Uh, so yeah, I just got to check the blade depth because that's quite a thick counter and I'm going through, um, if you take a look, I'm going through, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but I'm, I'm going right through those thicknesses. So I'm going through two, two thicknesses of um, baby plywood here. These are looking like half inch. So that's an inch plus another whatever. Let's get a tape measure on that and see. It is two inches. Two inch runes thick. So that means when that jigsaw blade is on its high, high part of the cycle, it needs to be two inches long. 
long is that jigsaw blade? It is two inches now, so I have a feeling I might not have the right blade. I might need to get a fine toothed sawzall blade and not use these little short stubby jigsaw blades. So I might go off and get me a, a metal four inch sawzall blade because first of all it's a much more robust blade so it'll stay straighter and secondly um, I don't have to worry about the uh, tip skipping out. That's happened to me a couple times when I've used a blade that's too short to cut thick stuff and uh, it's just such a drag to leave a big dent or chip in a material and then have to figure out what to do next. So off to the store to buy a four inch fine toothed sawzall. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, giving me a like, and leaving me a comment. I really enjoy making these videos and I want to know from you how I can make them better. The whole point of these videos is to demonstrate that if I can do something, you can do it too. Well, that's it for now. So long, and remember, keep making.